Surprise burrito. Hi, I'm Garrett Watts, about to sit down with my boy, <laughs> Tom Ward. I said my boy, but I actually don't know him. We're recording right now. We're sitting here with Garrett motherfucking Watts. Okay. We're on. Oh my gosh. We're not very professional around here. Can I start with a life hack? Sure. Red vine in the cola. Dude, you're going to hate this. I hate red vines. I don't hate that. I don't, I don't I'm care. I'm a Twizzler guy. If you give me the choice, people on the West Coast are going to go, oh, red vines. I don't discriminate. <clears throat> yeah. But I like that. Thank you. Thank you. Very innovative. Thanks. I actually do it too often. <laughs> well, you are like kind of a life hacker. I saw your wake up at 5 a.m. video, uh, your hoarding cleanup video. Are yeah. you like a self-improvement kind of guy? Yes. I mean, yeah, definitely. I read a lot of like nonfiction, if that's what you're asking. Okay. What like my bookshelf is almost like if someone in my place, when they start walking towards my bookshelf, I'm a little like, oh, look at this other thing. <laughs> because <laughs> cause I just love like... <clears throat> Because there's a time for fiction, mm -hmm. and I love fiction, but I get that fix from like video games in particular. I'm a huge gamer, oh, which really? is something that a lot of people, I don't know, I don't really talk about. What are you but playing? Right now, sure. I cannot stop playing Red Dead Redemption 2. Are you serious? Which is more like a relationship than a, than a game. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm like kind of being serious. It's like, it's like an issue. Wait, is that the cowboy one? It's a cowboy one, and I love... Are you a bad cowboy or a good cowboy? I'm so good. It's crazy. What's the fun in that? Oh. Don't you want to rob people? Are and you a crazy person? Get with prostitutes and stuff? I no, know. I mean, no. <laughs> I have like, if someone sasses me the wrong way, yeah. sure. Sure, I'll <laughs> take them out to the forest and shoot them. No, I don't know. How do you sass somebody? I'm not a gamer. How okay. do you sass someone? You'll be riding your horse okay. and someone will get, say something like, oh, you think you're a tough guy, huh? <laughs> you go, skirt. Get off your horse and go like, yeah, what's up? <laughs> but I, I diffuse. There's options in that game. You can either like antagonize or diffuse. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's clicked away. They don't want to hear you talking about Red Dead Redemption. No, <laughs> they want to hear you talk about anything going on in your life. I love. I, that is. I swear, there's more things happening than just Red Dead Redemption Two. But that okay. game is amazing, and I'm obsessed. And I love video games in general. I've okay. Been a hardcore gamer since I was a but a, a but a boy. So you're reading though. You're reading self help though. Yeah. Oh, I forgot where I was going with that. See, I'm keeping keeping Thank on track, you. my no, friend. I need that. I'm here. Ugh. Thank you. Yeah, I'm watching my ADD. I'm fucking laser focused. Help I me. had a cold brew. I'm ready. <laughs> That's great. Um, oh, see, I forget where we were. Okay. Yes. The uh, you're doing I these always, life hack things. I always read like nonfiction books because I get my fiction from other places. And then when it's time to like sit down and read, I see it as a time to be like, okay, okay, you know. So books about like, like what? Don't know, you know, working on yourself in some respect or spirituality or the four agreements or like you know just kind of how to be. That's cool. Yeah, like kind of thoughtful. Alan Watts, that kind of stuff. Sure, very just... Alan Watts. People, I, people will not understand that reference. Oh, I wish, read The Wisdom of Insecurity. If okay. you're watching this, where well, I don't know what camera it is. Yeah, but... yeah, this is, <laughs> that's you. Hey. Um, no, but uh, I love books. Yeah, I love books. Sorry. Oh, okay. I don't out about that. Do you well, like reading? I do, but I have uh, two little kids. <gasps> Babies? So I've got an eight-month-old and I've got a four-year-old. Can I even walk or do anything? Um, the, the eight month old just started crawling yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Where's the craziest, the craziest place that your friggin' baby has crawled? Well, she just started crawling yesterday. So just in the, <laughs> in the playroom. That's, that is that's, so cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I thought about getting a beta fish the other day. Oh. I was like, nah, that's too much. That's a big commitment. Big commitment. Yeah. I had one for like two years. Ah, I couldn't commit to a beta fish though. I need actual on? therapy. I don't know. <laughs> are you are you in a relationship now? No, 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 no. Single as can be. Okay. So and are I are you single and uh, and out there and looking? Yeah, 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 definitely. I'm in a weird place right now just because I, I haven't I don't really I'm not like dating right now. Okay. But because I, I go on too many dates and I'm really bad at it, so I had to stop and just be like, okay, figure out yourself before you keep on ghosting people. I that's thought like, you would be an awesome dater. I you're am. You're funny. I mean, so, you're personable. <laughs> Why wouldn't it be a good no, date? No, thank you. It is a good date. I am a good dater, I think. If I were to be on the other side of a date. You go, that's just fucking nice. I think the other person would see it as a nice experience. It generally is. It's fun and whatever. But I am, I don't, after the date is when I'm bad. Why? Uh, you're a ghoster? I'm a ghoster. Oh, and I can't on, keep on. I know, I know. It's really, really bad. And I can't keep doing that. And so I just had to be like, stop. So I just had to kind of stop dating until I figure that out. Uh, why ghost? 
That's the question, isn't it? I don't yeah, that's know. what you're trying no, to figure out. I don't know. Out. I mean, seriously, yeah. It's like, it's kind of messed up. I mean, it's very messed up because I hear people talk about it all the time in conversations. Yeah. When someone's like, you know, we're having brunch or something and eating some eggs and they're like, oh, this person ghosted me. And I have to be like, oh, that, <laughs> you know, and I have to be like, oh, that sucks knowing that like I'm, because I, because dating in LA is really hard, but yeah. I always have a problem like saying that. And now I tell people, I'm like, and I am, I am that. I am the part of that problem. Okay. You're not part of the solution. No, I'm not part of the solution. So I have to say, like, dating is really hard in LA, and I agree with that sentiment. Mm-hmm. But I am, I am also part of that problem. So it's that's a tricky thing. But I'm doing the <clears throat> what I think to be the responsible thing, and kind of like shelving that side of me until I can kind of be better and more responsible with people's time and emotions. That's pretty mature. Thanks. I'm kind of mature sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know. In small doses. Well, sometimes. that's a healthy way to look at things, right? <laughs> yeah. Most people just fucking go through life. To, like crazy or dating and Ugh. ghosting people and, no, and that's all being I'm, shady and I no I get it but I'm saying in that respect uh, you know and it, it can it can bite you too people like you know what do you mean like, this, okay this is so whatever this <laughs> my mom called me I can't believe I'm telling this stuff Why my, not? my mom it's called me it's just us buddy it's just us <laughs> no, it's just us here I'm sorry and if I look like what's the word like neurotic or something yeah. it's just because I don't do podcasts often so I'm like do I look at you or where do yeah. I, I so I'm this also- is you that's the wide <laughs> shot sir come on you know I know, cameras I know, I know cameras but I usually just know one okay so yeah, yeah. we don't fuck um, around three camera shoot my friend this is great Isn't oh this nice wow yeah so I you got one wide shot and you <laughs> I swear I've seen a camera before, yeah. sorry. <laughs> um, You've been on YouTube since 2012. I know, and I've uploaded six times since. No, I'm joking. Uh, no, I, <laughs> that's terrible. But I get it, I'm aware. Yeah. Um, no, I, oh, what I was going to say though is my mom called me, mm-hmm. and she was like so mad, and she was like, who's this piece of shit, blank, 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 like, and she said the name of like a YouTuber. Oh. And I was like, mom, what are you talking about? They're like, they made a video about you called like my horrible date with Garrett Watts. Wow. With like an asterisk, like disgusting. You won't believe what happened. And I was like, what? And I saw the like picture. Like super clickbaity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super like fire with like <laughs> a picture of me smiling and him looking shocked. <laughs> and I, and I was like, and I saw the picture and I recognized the person. I won't dare say his name because it's silly. It's like whatever. And plus the video. People can find it. Well, the video's gone now. Oh, it is. Okay. But but like I watched the video and it's just nothing. It was just someone. And that's what's kind of scary about like dating and also doing what I do is because. And by the way, the video was literally nothing. He was like just mad because I ghosted him. But he was like, he was a total gentleman and he picked me up. Or like we met at a bar and he got me a drink and it was great. And he dropped me off. He had to drive like, you know. 15 miles out of his way, but he was so sweet, total gentleman. There was nothing. And everyone in the comments was like, you're a what monster. Bullshit. Like, Yeah, because he made it look like something like... How many views did it get? Oh, I don't know, 2,000 or something. Oh, okay. But it was one of those, because it wasn't like his channel's... I don't, know, I, don't, I don't even know if he has like 10 followers. Or <laughs> okay. But I'm saying like it was just one of those things to where I just wanted to like kind of pop off on him and tell him like, dude, why did you do this? You're like, why it's scary to put yourself out there. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'm not a person, I mean, obviously I knew the video would be nothing because I'm not like some creep or something in that, <laughs> yeah. in that respect. So I was just like, what is this going to be? I'm just glad he didn't make stuff up. But it was just invasive. He was like showing text messages. And oh, really? It was weird, even though just sweet ones. Like, hey, I'll be there in like a minute, whatever. And he's, I don't know. So I don't even know why I started on this, but it's just, it's weird. Dating. Do you have to be careful? Because you're a big YouTuber, you're famous. <gasps> That's what's so funny. So do you have to go out with other YouTubers? Can you date a civilian? (laughs) Yeah, date a civilian. (laughs) Ideally, no, no, no. Like, I'm just looking, I want to find like a dude who's like, just owns like a a candle store somewhere in like some town of 20 people in. You ever see Shit's Creek? I'm obsessed with Do you want to do <laughs> date with his name? Yeah, David Ro- Wait, well, David Rose. Like, you mean the main character? Yeah, yeah. Or, oh, no, or his Patrick. boyfriend. Patrick. You, you okay. want a Patrick? If any of you know a Patrick from Shit's we'll Creek. insert pictures here. Yes, please. It doesn't matter how he looks. Just, you have to watch the show and know his vibe. I'm looking for a Patrick. Okay, Patrick's the real straight guy. Well, uh, here's the thing, though. I mean, I don't care if he's straight. Like, there, Not straight, oh, I yeah, mean, yeah. but like very yeah. business-minded. Business-minded and the opposite of David. Yes. I, dude, this could turn into a Shit's Creek podcast. Be careful. <laughs> okay. Because Moira Rose lives in my head oh, my constantly. Oh. Who's your favorite on Shit's Creek? Moira Rose. Is she really? <laughs> she, <laughs> sorry, she has so many moments that just kill me. There's so many good memes, too. <laughs> She's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, they're really good with I like life. David. David's my guy. There is, they're that, all good. Their the sister's all, good. Dude, I can't. I want to cry thinking about it. It's so good. Sorry. Um, but yeah, I, I just, yeah, I, I'm looking for, I, I do not have, I don't think I have to date other YouTubers or anything like that. I don't know. I honestly don't know. But yeah, it is spooky sometimes because I'll, I'll do my vetting. Mm-hmm. Like when I match with someone on Tinder, I'll go to their Instagram account and like, 
you know, see if they're following, like, you know, the whole squad. Logan like Shane Paul and, and Andrew Shane and, and, yeah, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah. And so, and they'll they'll try to bamboozle you, which is really. What do you mean? Like, you know. They'll they probably just, cream themselves if they're fans of well, Shane and you guys. Yeah, and they'll talk to you for, like, a long time, you know, three days deep in a conversation. And sometimes I'll just get a little lazy and not do the Instagram thing. And I'll suddenly be like, hey, like, what, you know, what's your Instagram? Or I'll find it on my own. Yeah. Because of resources. <clears throat> and like, yeah. And then it's just like they're following every single person. Oh, that, like, and I'm like, you trickster. And then I just unmatch and whatever. That's yeah. not ghosting. That's no. me like call, not calling out, but just sort of being like, dodge yeah, that one. There's got to be some distance. Because that's like dishonest. And yeah. there's been plenty of times that someone's like, hey, just so you know, just to get in front of this. Like, I've seen who you are and like whatever. And, th- and I'm just like, oh, thanks for saying that. That's cool. And oh. then they just continue on like normal. So it's not like a deal breaker if someone knows who I am or something. But I would never like, you know. Like, I would never take advantage of someone's, like, kind of, I don't know, fan. I hate that word. It feels so weirdly disrespectful. Fan. I don't know. Yeah. But like, I love the idea of fandom. I'm a huge fan of many things. But do you, Does your fans have a name? Like, the Watts no. crew? The Watts squad? No. They do have names, yes. It is their own names that their mothers gave them. I got you. I'm not into all that, like... Yeah, everybody has, like, a name for their... Nope. People, their squad no, name. they don't need to identify with anything that I call them. What makes them so cool is they identify with what they are. Yeah. Like, my favorite musicians and stuff, like, my favorite musician of all time. James is, Blake? Oh, you've done your research. Buddy, this isn't my first <laughs> rodeo. Come on now. <laughs> of course. I love him so much. Yeah. He's just amazing. I've been listening to him since, like, 2012. I'm mm-hmm. like, I know it sounds so hipster, but the first time I saw him was in Chicago. And it's like, and there's only three you know, people in the no, audience. It was, it was like, me. yeah, it was like 50 people at this place called the Metro. And he was just doing his thing. Now he's, Metro, you know, yeah. oh, yeah, oh yeah. You, are, you are cool. Yeah. You're informed. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. But someone asked him. They were like, so why'd you go with James Blake as a name for your stage name? And he yeah. was just like, oh, it's just my name. Like, yeah, that's so sick. Yeah. I don't know. I like people that just, you know. You have such engaged fans. I'm sure this will get a ton of views I, because they love you so much. And people's number one question, I reached out on Twitter and I yeah. said, hey, I'm interviewing Garrett. What questions you got? Yeah, I, by, can, I, I, can, I know. By far. <laughs> yeah. You already know this. <laughs> I know. And I looked it up. You've only posted five times this year. Is that right? That's wild. I guess I hadn't really thought about it that much. It's like... It's, They're like, where is he? What's he doing? It's What's so, going on? I know. And it's weird because I never want them to think that I'm like disrespecting them by, you know, feeling like they're ignored or something. Because I am so... If I'm one thing, it's like deeply grateful. Yeah. For all the people who like supported me and stuff and helped me figure this out. And like Shane helped me sort of mentored my channel and stuff so early on because I was doing stuff that was so whack in the beginning. You can still travel far back and see stuff that I was like, why isn't this working? And he was like, because who would want to watch that? You know what I mean? And so I liked the stuff anyways. But, you know, I'm just, I've been so, so endlessly, like, grateful or, and lucky in all those respects to be lifted as I have by loved ones and friends and such. Um, and, yeah, I'm, I feel like I've won the lottery every day with just, like, I don't know, the fact that people even watch me or care. Because it doesn't make any sense. Like, I'm not buying Lamborghinis for my friends, and it's like, I'm not... Is that insane? That's like a trend now? And it's, I, it's awesome, like, for, you know, obviously, who I'm referring to is David and Heath and yeah, stuff. Yeah. That's, like, really sweet energy, and it's yeah. like, hey, that's cool. But, um, yeah, it's like, I'm uh, delighted that someone wants to watch, like, a grown-ass man just being kind of strange in his place and, like, animating toilets and, like, you know, with the, with the scary baby doll yeah. that I've... Vo- it's this... It's it is like, an intimate <clears throat> thing to have somebody even to watch this right now. Watch yeah. an old bald guy interview you <laughs> is fucking cool. Well, you're not old. That's LA speaking. Okay, that's true. <laughs> All right, yeah. Dead, like old is dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But seriously, like to have somebody watch yeah. something you create, it's very intimate. It's super intimate. It's really sweet. And like, I, 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 lit, I cannot believe, I feel like I'm always about to wake up from like a dream. <laughs> So, but as for the infrequency thing, I, I definitely like, just if I'm being totally honest, yeah, yeah, I definitely have like an issue with understanding what it means to do what I do because <clears throat> it was all such a blitzkrieg. It came in really quickly for me and stuff. And so, you know, I went from, the thing about me is I, I like, I have worked every job in LA. I didn't like come here and then just start like, oh, I want to be like a famous YouTuber or yeah. something like that. I've been a productionist. I mean, this <laughs> set right now, I want to get up and like adjust wires. And I've been a PA on easily over like, uh, uh, well, like, that's exaggerating. Probably fifty sets easily. Okay. I've been everyone's assistant. I was in casting. I was well, go in, back like, for you know, a sec. Yeah, sorry. Pause, pause on that, right? <laughs> yeah. Because I didn't do my homework. Yeah. And so you're from Tennessee. You know, the internet you thinks I am born in Tennessee. You're not. It's not true. I was born in Scottsdale, Arizona. I lived in Scottsdale, Arizona. Yeah, because you have a six six zero two area code. So I, I do expose your area yes, code. Yes, yes. I but lived yeah. on Indian School Road. Yeah, I lived in Tempe. Oh, um, yeah. So I was born in Scottsdale, but I moved when I was like this big. Oh, so you're an Arizona guy through and through. I would say. Why I mean, do they say Tennessee? Well, because, okay, so my trajectory was born in Scottsdale, moved to Orlando, Florida for six years, moved to Memphis, Tennessee for like 
seven years, oh. and then Arizona for like seven years, and so it's been it's basically like six or seven years everywhere. Sorry, I don't know if my math oh, okay. adds up there, but yeah, a lot of different. But my parents were very. Um, they had a lot of different ideas. I'll say that. And much. you were you grew up Mormon. Yeah, right? definitely. Okay. Yeah, which I super respect. Like you get a lot of people who are you still part of the no, church? No, 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 because it wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because they're like. But yeah, I don't. Uh, there's these uh, things called Jack Mormons, which I'm, have you heard of that phrase? Yeah, there's a lot of Mormons in Mesa, Arizona. Well, Jack Mormons what means Jack like Mormon? it, like rebellious kind of Mormons who like are like badass I Mormons. Hate, oh, no, like I hate it. They they oh. they they spend a couple of years of their life like preaching against the church and kind of being like it was the worst thing that. I, uh, I've got nothing to do with that energy. I have so much respect for growing up in the church and um, growing up around family and you know Boy Scouts. That stuff gave me my core. I would never disrespect that. Um, now, do I like stand against some of the stuff that they do? You know, in two thousand eight, with the I hated all that shit with the being against gay marriage. It was so heartbreaking. Are they pro see. yet? Yeah, they'll come around any Eventually, day. Now. I mean, any day. Twenty nineteen. Yeah, they're gonna be like our prophet. You know, said that it was okay now because they, they yeah. have to do that to survive. Yeah, yeah. It's so true. people do what they need to do to survive, and a church is a people at the end of the day. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, no, I, I I loved how I was raised. I don't know. But you grew up in so you grew up in Arizona, and you went to Mesa Community College. Yeah, I did. I did my homework, and if you look, guys, check it out on Mesa Community College's website. They have a little Garrett Watts article. Shut your mouth. When I was doing my research, I go, Wow, he's made it. Are you he serious? He's on the Mesa Community <clears throat> College I've website. I made it. My Mesa Community College website yes. has a feature. <laughs> You're a famous <laughs> alum. That is so funny. Yeah. I, I loved, like, I am a huge, dude, I, I, have, so many, I have so many things to say. Go I just, I just, no, no, I just, I just love, like, yeah, I love going to, like, a community college. I don't have anything to do with anyone else's, like, projections of what anything is in mm -hmm. terms of, like, oh, a community college? Like, that shady kind of energy. Yeah, I had loved I did it, it so much. Yeah. So like, I don't, it was fun getting my little associates. And I moved out here thinking I would continue. Yeah. Like, so so you came. So you graduated. And you came out to LA for what? I came out to LA to make it. I, or yeah. Like, I, well, I thought I wanted to be a director. Okay. Um, and I didn't quite know what that meant. And I, then I started working on a ton of different sets and seeing what the job was of a director. And then I thought I wanted to be an art designer. And all the meanwhile, I was working in restaurants and doing all this, just doing whatever to get Doing by. the LA deal? Yeah, <clears throat> doing the LA deal. Waiting tables, Waiting doing tables, whatever you have to do. Everything, I've bust a billion tables. I used to work at the Cheesecake Factory. That's a hard job, because Cheesecake, the people, it's like an hour wait, Yeah, it never stops. I got fired from that job and also every job that I've ever had outside of YouTube. So thank you for not firing me yet. <laughs> but um, Why'd you get fired from Cheesecake Factory? Because I would always just, because they told me that I was too personable at the tables. Oh. They'd be like, you're too casual. You can't like sit down with people. You can't, because <laughs> sometimes I would do that. I would just be like, like I'm uh, trying to eat. What's this guy doing? Well, down no, next I week. would just, if there was like room, I would just be like, hey, what's, I don't know. I wasn't trying to like, <laughs> I guess now that I say it out loud, it does sound insane. <laughs> but they were just like, yeah. <laughs> They, they, I wasn't like Cheesecake Factory material. Oh, man. Because I because they had to like, you have to iron your clothes and stuff. And mm -hmm. I always be like, what does that mean? They're just going to get wrinkled the next day. I'm not going to iron my clothes. It's so <laughs> stupid. Like, aren't I enough? <laughs> it's like, you know, know, it was silly. So you you couldn't kind of hold the job? I mean, what was, why did you get fired from these jobs? You well, seem like a nice, personable guy. No, no, no. It's, it was always a matter of like, too nice. Hardworking. Eh. Okay. No, but. <laughs> too no, nice. I, How do you I, get fired from being too nice? Well, no, also, I'm, see, I'm like hyping myself up now. Because now that I think about it from a perspective, I, I was also late all the time. Oh, okay. I'm like one of those people, who, I, that was a nonfiction book that I read recently, is like how not to be perpetually late or chronically late. Okay. Chronically is the word. Um, yeah, I'm always like late to stuff and work included. Okay. They were like, you can't come in late every day. And I was like, ugh. So when did YouTube come into the picture? So you're getting fired from sure. jobs, you're living in LA, you're doing the sure, deal. Sure, sure, sure. I, so I, I, um, I started on Vine, was my, my first yeah. platform in 2013. Thousands of Vines. Thousands right? of Vines, yes. Um, and that was like a really fun platform to be on and stuff. And it was, what would you do? Like what kind of, oh my so stuff? Quick, oh, you, my stuff was like so peculiar. It would be like, um, my ghost is haunted by someone who died in 2003 and never got a chance to see Celine Dion's like live. It was like really specific stuff. And so it would just be like a ghost being like, was it any good? And me being like, I don't want to talk about it right now. Like, so it was, you'd have to read the, it was, they were confusing yeah. probably. But no, it got me a good start. And I like, was comedy your thing? Yeah. Oh, that's a weird thing. I've never felt like a funny person. It's so strange. Like, but you're obviously funny. No, I don't know. You have that, to know that. It's weird. I like, the camera guy is laughing. Was this no, laughing? I, no, I mean, I, but even even my videos, it's weird. I like don't know what funny means. I just all I do because I was a wedding DJ for a long time as well, like through college and stuff. And all 
being a wedding DJ and being like on YouTube and making videos are so similar to me. Why? Because all I do is like, it's the videos are just like energy. They're just like this. And I know how people watch videos. And so I edit to that style of kind of what I would want to see yeah. and what I would want to feel. And to me, it's just like, like this wave. That's like, I know this is like silly to do a hand gesture, but it's sure. just like all I see when I'm editing. I don't see funny. I don't see anything. It's just like the only energy that I can give. I, maybe it sounds a little... I don't mean to get like too philosophical. No, because you're such a good editor, and that's yeah. what all your fans always say. I was reading your comments. Oh, and no, I know they're really. They sweet, always but... say, what, "And you are a great editor." I but, love, dude. I but love I thought you would look like cut. You know, keep yeah. the funny joke in, cut the dead stuff, cut, keep this in. Oh, if people, I would die if people could see my raw footage. It's, it's so embarrassing. Why is it just just because it's super like, long? Yeah, and because I try to speak pretty quickly, like my cadence and my voice is pretty quick. It seems like you talk faster on YouTube than you're talking now in yeah. real life. Well, because. I'm all, like, Do you amp it up for YouTube? And th but this is, yes, everyone does. Oh, yeah, true. But this is kind of like the interesting thing, and this is an overarching like theme of this conversation of kind of that where have you been thing is, I think that I'm, a lot of people who are on YouTube, like there are so many people right now, if you name like a social media influencer, sure. I can bust out my phone and see exactly where they are. Exactly where they are on Instagram, like through their stories. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but I've always been kind of big on separating like my kind of life from um, YouTube, and yeah. it's not to say that what I do on YouTube is any sort of disingenuine or like not who I am. But, but you're not, hey, I'm a cheesecake factory nah, right now, getting my car washed, no, like and, and subscribe. Like, and sometimes I'm in situations to where I do kind of think to myself, like, wow, anyone else would be like, da -da 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 -da, you know, yeah. on overlooking some gorgeous view and being with, you know, having this cool spread of food, like, you know, yeah, I, I went to Japan for like two weeks, and I think I made like one story there, just being like, "Hey guys, I'm sorry, I'll upload soon." You know, like yeah. that sort of thing. And but, it's you're, just, but on some level, don't your fans? I'm sure they're going, "We want to see Japan, Andrew." And, and maybe we it's like a, it. maybe it's like an Garrett, ego. Sorry, it's Coach like Andrew. no, it's, no, it's okay. Oh yeah, oh, I love Andrew. <laughs> if you're talking about Andrew Schwicky, I want to talk about Andrew too. I love him so much. Um, no, but yeah, it's and maybe that's right. And maybe it's like an ego thing to where it's like I need to. Oh, I think I touched my mic. Sorry, uh -oh. I'm like fidgety with everything. So. <laughs> you're good. Um, we're not professional around here. Sick. That's great. No, I think I, um, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. I just need to like, uh, I, I think that maybe I think that people don't want to see me all the time or that it's some sort of like burden. So I'm just like, no, you'll see me when it's like a really good or something. But that's funny. That's you what know? makes you attractive, right? Is the person yeah. who wants to be seen all the time and yeah. is posting, tw you know, when you look, go on the Instagram stories, da, 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 da. Yeah. They're annoying. You don't want to see them. But the person who's kind of more reserved and like, I don't really want to post. I'm going to go away. Yeah. It's like dating, right? Yeah. You don't want to date the thirsty guy. You I mean, want to date the one kind of playing hard to get. You're not kind of <laughs> sure where they're coming from. And that's that, you. That is you play hard to get. I've always loved, and maybe this is like a problem. I hope not. I've always loved this guy named Alex Ernst so much on social media. And like, who's I'm, that? Oh, he's uh, part of like sort of the vlog squad, but distantly in my opinion. Okay. Because he makes these really... I, I've like watched his stuff before and I've always, cause I was kind of watching him before I even like got started in that sort of thing. And I would just think like, I love his presence because he like stands in this group that people love and stuff, but he also is very autonomous and his stuff doesn't feel like anyone else, not to shade anything that the vlog squad or no, anyone no. else does, but it's like, it's really cool because the stuff that he does feels so different from anything else. And he kind of, uploads when he can or when he wants to mm -hmm. and I kind of see the same patterns in him of like he'll be like okay I'm coming back for real this time and I want to like take this more yeah. seriously because there's that constant like narrative in your head battling like what you're supposed to do because you're like a YouTuber and you know you're supposed to be present and you should be, be uploading consistent twice. like the number thing, it's it's number, like one the thing right? number one thing which I have a problem with because it's just like I don't know it's just my nature and oh. you're at a different level now too yeah, and I'm like... You've got subscribers, you got people who like you. I'm so delighted. Every video I upload, I don't look at the views for like a day because I'm just like, it probably has, uh, you know, 10,000 views and I deserve it. I'm just like, I don't care. <laughs> I, I, if it's over, it's over. And, yeah. and it's, you know, it's finally come to, I'm going to answer for it now. And, <laughs> and it makes me so nervous. But like, but yeah, but then I'm like, oh, thank you. I yeah. just like want to like cry because I like see that people are still watching and they're like, hey, I love like your last video. You had 59,000 comments. Okay, I love the comments so and much. And you said you read all the comments I, Do you I, really? Well, no, no. I you say can't. so now. I say I, I read as many as I possibly can because I respond to comments in the YouTube Studio app, okay. and it cuts you off after a while. You can you can go for like an hour, and then it literally won't show you anymore. It's like really weird. So I read as many as I can within reason because it'd be impossible to read fifty nine thousand comments. You know, I read some of the fifty nine thousand comments, and there's yeah. some good ones in here. Oh, they're so, so I, dude. I honestly, love Garrett has the personality of a dog, not in a mean way, but in a nice way. He's got a short attention span, always happy, very <laughs> hyper, adorable, and so nice. Well, most dogs are nice, but he's so welcoming. That's really sweet. Yeah, I I have definitely they they one time I saw a psychic. Well, I flirted with him once in a psychic store. <laughs> His name was Henry. What is a psychic store? It, it's, it's in Burbank, I think. It's like 
Uh, no, now I'm calling out, which is cute psychic. Sorry. <laughs> he was so gorgeous and I thought we were flirting. And then yeah. like, I, wait, he was like, well, let's hang out sometime. And I thought we were on a date. Mm -hmm. We weren't. He was straight. I was like, dang it. <laughs> and uh, but anyways, he read my tarot and stuff, and he was like, "You're what they call a new soul." And I was like, okay. "What's that?" What's that? And he was like, "Well, some some souls are old." He's like, "Some souls are um, old souls," and he's like, "That's what you hear a lot of people talk about. They're wiser. They're yeah, a little yeah. more like not jaded, but a little more like kind of they don't give things the benefit of the doubt. They're like, I've been here, done this before. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, a lot of people are old souls, but he's like, some people are new souls. He's like, he's like, are you very like curious all the time and engaged, and you can't stay focused? I was like. All these things to where, like, if you Google like new soul symptoms, I'm like, yes, 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 that's me, that's me. Yeah. Because I feel like a like a bug or like a baby who just landed on the planet, and like maybe this. He was like, it could be your first or your third life, but he's like, it's definitely a new one. I was like, oh, that's interesting. That's because cool. like I, that's and it's almost to a fault because I'm what they like. When it comes to, I'm not an overly ambitious person when it comes to like YouTube and brand deals and stuff. Yeah. Like, and I again to a fault because. Well, and I wanted to ask you just to yeah. cut you off financially, so I go, mm -hmm. how's he doing it, right? Five videos a year. Yeah. The brand deals, that money gets spent quickly. The the AdSense revenue, or, or do you does hold it get, on? Does I don't it, know. Yeah, it, not for me. I mean, I have a 2006 Prius with the AC that doesn't work. And I, you came in sweaty because the AC doesn't very work. very sweaty. Doesn't doesn't I work. live in like a small place. To me, <clears throat> uh, the most like- You live intel below your means. Yeah, yeah As I opposed do. to a lot of YouTubers now who've yeah. got the Lambo and the rented house in the hills. Which is so funny because people are going to be like, well, he's wearing these Gucci shoes. But I was just telling Tom this story. Shane got these for me and they're so cool. He got them for me for my birthday and I opened I opened up a box and it was a Gucci box. And I think I literally said to him like, Shane, like this is dumb. <laughs> like what could be in here that you think I would, you know what yeah. I mean? And he was like, no, I promise they made something for you. And it's these like shoes that look like old, like from a garden or like they look like your mom's old gardening shoes. Yeah, yeah. And so they look old already. Oh, also I'm wearing box troll socks. What is that? It's a, it's a movie, box trolls. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I, yeah, I definitely, I don't know. I've never, the smartest words in like the world to me mm -hmm. are like everything is everything. Those are my favorite three words. What do you mean? Like walking into a hotel room that costs like $10,000 a night or something yeah. and walking into my tiny house. Yeah. It, it's the exact same experience to me. Like I have a, t I have a TV, mm -hmm. I have a couch, I mm -hmm. have a bed. It's like the linens and the things that it's made out of and what works on people so traditionally in terms of like sure. nice things. Yeah. I don't know where to draw that line or how to, it's like, how is my Prius any different than like a candy painted Lambo? I don't understand. What do you mean? It's, There's a big difference. Where? Don't you think so? Just, I don't know, it's a lot faster. It looks cooler, the Lambo. My car has music. True. It, I can roll the windows down and like sing and go from point A to point B. Yeah. I treat a Lambo the same way. It's just like, I don't know. Because I've been inside of a Lambo. Yeah. I've been inside of like a gorgeous million, $10 million house, like all this yeah, stuff. Yeah. And I'm always just like, kind of like that, this ain't it. Like that kind of reaction yeah. of like, I don't know. What do you think about when you look and not to name names or throw shade yeah. at anybody, but when you're on Instagram and the hot YouTuber of the moment and you look and you go, do you shake your head? I mean, because I look at it sometimes and go, dude, you're not going to have money in a year. Oh. What are you doing? Yes. Save your money. But you know what? There's people in my life that have to remind me sometimes that be like, stop seeing money as like a scarcity. Don't like hang on to it. You need to kind of like Treat spend. yourself. Yeah, like I have a few people in my life who are really good about that and being like, dude, get a new car. Yeah. And I'm like getting there. Yeah. I found a car that I'm in love what with. What are you going to get? It's called- A Lambo? No. <laughs> no, it's called, it's a, it's a Kia. <laughs> it's so sick. It's called the Telluride and I'm super excited I'm about it. I'm looking at the camera right now. Kia, you're doing it all wrong. No, Where doing, is the game wagon? Am I doing it all wrong or I am know. I doing it? No, you're it? doing it 100% right. So there was, I did this like- You're doing it right. I did this magazine interview thing recently for like Cist Prune. I don't know if I'm saying that right. And one of the questions was like, why are you so quiet on social media? Yeah. Like, what is the whole thing about you being like quiet? And my response to that, and this is like thought out, I'm not acting like this is an original thought because I <laughs> thought it out, but I was like, am I quiet on social media or is everyone else just very loud? I was like, where do you draw the parameters of like what it means to do what I do? Where, where's the rule book for that? The most delightful thing about what I do is that there is no rule book for it. True. And so it's one of those things to where, I don't know, but I do know, having said that, I do know that I have to be better at what I do. Like, I, I don't fool myself. I know I want to upload more often. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to do those things. I don't fool myself anymore and be like, I'm going to upload once every two weeks. No. Yeah. I think the best case scenario for me is like uploading once a month. Okay. Because I put so much into my videos too. Yeah. That like, I always joke that- it's high I, quality. Well, and every time I edit a it's video- It's kind of long it's, form. Yeah. And I, I joke that it like takes a year off of my life. I'm like, ah, there it goes. I'll probably <laughs> die at like 68 now yeah. or something. Like, I don't know. Because I just stay up for like- 12 days, like drinking coffee, like yeah. it's, it's crazy. What do you, uh, you mentioned Shane before too. Yeah. You guys dated, uh, you're friends now. Yeah. 
It's so odd to me because sure. you're both funny. Yeah. You kind of look the same. You have the reddish hair, beardish oh. thing going. <laughs> I, I think I know where you're going you're, with this. You've got very similar personalities. And yeah. usually people with similar personalities <laughs> hate each other. Like opposites oh. attract kind of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think Shane and I were, were like... And I, it's so you're funny that you YouTubers, say- You're both YouTubers, you're both funny, you're both creative. Like you have so many things in common. And that's why, but I, yeah. And, but I mean, that's why we're such good friends. But yeah, yeah. it's funny when people, when I, I remember that, like the whole dating thing, cause we like yeah. lead into it a little bit in like the videos and stuff. Cause technically yeah. it's true, but yeah, I just, I don't even think about that. I just think that, you know, we're like really good friends and stuff. But, um, but are you asking like, what are you saying about how similar we are? Um, I just thought it was yeah. weird that you were in a relationship and you guys are so similar. It's kind of definitely. You know, I mean, if you look at my wife, like I'm pretty tall, she's yeah. short. I'm white, she's brown. <laughs> like, I, you know, we're opposites. But that's what we ran into. Is that was you're being too like, similar? Just yeah. like kind of too similar sort of thing. And I think a lot of people get there. It like at first, it's like, whoa, is this it? And then it's yeah. like. Oh no, we're just kind of like looking in a mirror at this point. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, he's a, drinking A and W root beer, editing all night. You're drinking coffee, editing all night. There's like a, different beverage, same yeah, thing. There's so many simil- similarities, but there's also so many differences. It's really interesting. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I like. But I do think that there's sort of like an opposite track thing. Like the dynamic of him and Ryland is so beautiful and cool. Yeah, I love that so much. Yeah, um, it's really really They're cool. They're sweet. Yeah, and I think I need to open up my own mind and heart to sort of like <clears throat> understanding that a little bit more because sometimes what I look for in terms of relationship mm-hmm. is like what I think sounds good in theory, but then I'm like, no, I think I need someone who's very different from me. Yes. Who's maybe just like, that's why I was like looking, I'm looking for a guy who runs like a- Candle shop. Candle shop. Yes. And like doesn't know or even maybe like what I do. Yeah. And like shuts me down. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, because you, you don't want to be somebody who's like trying to get more followers on Instagram. No, that would be like a That'd night- be awful. That'd be a nightmare. I mean, it, <clears throat> but I wouldn't, like not date someone if they wanted to be like a YouTuber or something, if they were cool. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't no, know. I know. Every situation is different. I don't have any rules or anything like that. It's just, I don't know, I guess I'll just, when it comes along, that sort of thing. When I talked to Ryland, I interviewed Ryland, Mm -hmm. I interviewed Shane. Oh, okay. When I interviewed Ryland, he had such great things to say about Shane, but because he's a YouTuber and obviously Shane's one of the all-time greats, he said he picked up so many things from being in a relationship with Shane. Things like, I remember he told me that Shane would take an Uber to the gym because his trainer was like 20, 20 minutes away. Yeah. And so he could edit in the car. Oh. Like, how fucking productive is that? He is, Shane is one of the most golden guys I've ever met in my life. Um, what did you like, learn from him? Like, did believe, you pick up things like that? I just would want to say, like, believe the hype. Like, Shane is one of the sweetest, most, like, ugh, I could cry thinking about him. Like, just to his core. The things that he does, he did so many things early on in just our friendship and stuff that I was, like, just would sit there and just be like, oh, my God, this is insane. Who does this? Like, you what? Know? Just, like, if I... You know, because I used to like kind of help him with stuff, like kind of in a weird loose producing role and stuff. And he would just like, without me asking, like, you know, send a payment or something like that. Just being like, hey, dude, I just want you to know I appreciate you and your time is valuable. And like, he's just so, and I was just like, dude, thank you. Like, I just love making stuff and whatever. But it's not even stuff like that. It's just, he's just golden. He's so down, like his ego is not there when it comes to supporting and helping and loving other people. He doesn't, I, he doesn't have a Lambo. He could easily afford one. Well, of course, but he's, I mean, no, he's not about it's that. It's not him. But I'm just saying, he's just the first to jump on people to like help them and give them everything that they possibly could want in order to like succeed. And, and I think he gets disappointed when people don't like knock it out of the park. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you know what's funny? Cause I interview yeah. a ton of YouTubers, right? And so many of them have said like, Shane's the go-to mm-hmm. if they, they're they involved in drama. Like yeah. Tana said that, right? Tana's like, oh. you know, when TanaCon was yeah. going on, like Shane was the call. Like, what the fuck do I do? Yeah. How do I rectify this? Uh, but so many YouTubers, Shane's the first call they make. Cause he's the OG. I he mean, is. And there's a, like, what is so cool about when people say that like Shane is the best YouTuber, I don't like, I'm just like, Yes, because it's incredible because just how he's, uh, his, how he's adapted is so great. Like, how, you know, going from uploading every single day and like doing all this stuff just to now, because he's always been so good about that, like, you know, reading what he is and what he's doing and mm-hmm. then adapting to that. And that's, I think, what I would attribute like all of his incredible character and success to is just being able to like do that. Whereas a lot of people bang their head on the wall for 10 years going like, why isn't this thing, not naming any names, yeah. like, why isn't this thing working sure, that sure. I was doing in 2008? Yeah. Not working in 2019. It's yeah. like, you know what I mean? Or, I don't know. It's really interesting. And, and, and yeah. That's what Ryland said too. He said, yeah. he's such a great adapter. And he really is. If you think about it, what was he doing 10 years ago? And now he's making like long form docu-series. And, and he's so good at just being like, no, I can do it all. 
Yeah. You know, he's really, really good at just, yeah. And his work ethic and the ownership he takes of things. And he's just, he's just amazing. I could like sit here and like gas up Shane and just be like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love him so much. And yeah. you have a connection. You have Andrew. I love Andrew so that much. That you guys yeah. both work with. Yes. Andrew is like a golden human. <laughs> what's, what's, so, what's so great about Andrew? He's just, he is like. What makes him great? He's such a beautiful listener. He's such a cool guy to like, I mean, we'll just go deep for like four hours. I mean, like every time we hang out, it's almost like we both have to be like, damn it, we said we just get coffee and it's like <laughs> yeah. three hours later. We need to start our days. Because it's really tricky because it's a little isolating doing this. What he does, what I do. I mean, we yep. do kind of different things, but all similar at the end of the day. Yeah, and it's just you. Yeah, and you get to this place where you realize that you can't really talk about it to that many people. No one else can relate to, yeah. I only got 10,000 views. Yeah, and, or and it's, yeah. my subscribers are down or I don't know what to create. Yeah. Normal people can't, the candle shop owner can't relate to that. Yeah, and maybe that's whatever, <laughs> but it's really nice because Andrew's just like, I always think of him, he's more like a brother, to, like a brother in arms, sort of. Like, I just love being better with him. He's a friend that truly makes me feel like I can be better and get there. It's mm -hmm. like every time I hang out, hang out with Andrew, and I think this would go both ways, it feels very hopeful. Like we discussed, you know. Like he's optimistic? You seem yeah, optimistic yeah. too. Yeah, he's also very real. I mm -hmm. just I just love Andrew and endlessly, and he's one of the most solid friends I've ever had because he just he's never had a moment that makes you go, why would he do that? Because even you know people that you even love, yeah, you kind of have moments of being like, fuck, like yeah, kind of questioning them, even if it's like something that's slightly shady or kind of seeing past their agenda and being like, ah, weird. Well, I guess that person doesn't quite operate like I thought they did, and it's fine. Yeah. I still love them, but whatever. Yeah. He's just never that. He's just always incredibly pragmatic and reasonable. For me, I have this theory that cool, yeah. like a lot of people have this. What is cool? Co yes. That, what is cool to you? I can answer that in one word, reasonable. Like oh, yeah. cool isn't a costume. It's not what you wear. It's not, it's a car. not your car. It's like cool is reasonable. Cool is eye contact. Cool is like sitting there listening to people, like having an open heart and open mind. That's cool to me. I seem pretty cool right now. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah you're I'm great. I'm sitting I mean, with you. No, but I mean. I have an open heart. Dude, reason. I'm just sitting here. You're really cool, Tom <laughs> Ward. <laughs> Thank you. No, but I just love like, Andrew's just, I don't know. He's reasonable. He's the coolest person in, in, in my eyes. Yeah. Uh, so now I looked at the last couple of videos too. Yeah. A lot of TikTok sponsoring. You've got the Vine oh. background. Yes. Short form video. This is short form video. Short form video is my jam. Is that your jam? So I so I started on Vine and it, I you know not to float my own boat. <laughs> I actually put <laughs> I actually put this in the last video and then I ended up cutting it out because I was like this sounds like really like egotistical. But I won uh, like a, a best Vine presence in LA award with my writing partner at the time because we did a lot of vines together. But yeah, I like won this award through LA Weekly, which I'm not. Are they around still? That's they legit. Are, right? True. Yeah, it was like really cool. There's a little ceremony and everything, and I won that award over some other people that were much more popular than myself. And I kind of took pride in that because these other people were not, eh, sorry, <laughs> I don't want to be shady. Um, but yes, uh, yeah, it was like, it was really cool. And it, I, I was like very flattered at the time, but it, it sort of started this catalyst of like, I then got a job at Funny or Die, or I rather went in cr and created a job at Funny or Die. I kind of mm -hmm. marched in there and I was like, hey guys, like you aren't on anything. Like you're barely on Instagram, you're not on Vine, you're not on Snapchat, like sink or swim, you know? It was like yeah. that sort of thing. So I got in there and I worked for them for uh, almost two years doing all the short form video content. So it's like, you know, doing all the celebrities that came in and stuff. So it'd be like, oh, you have to shoot a vine today with like Jean-Claude Van Damme or something. And be like, okay, I don't know what that means, but all right. <laughs> so, you know, whatever. But it was a really fun job and short form video content is my favorite thing to do. So the TikTok brand deal was really natural yeah. um, for me to do. Cause it but was just like- You said it's like the most fun thing to do. It seemed, it would seem like it's the hardest thing to do. No. Creating long form is not that hard. You just, but there you only have your comedy guy to set up a joke to deliver the punchline in five seconds or how do you, oh, but isn't I, that hard? I would argue that even when my videos are 20 minutes, 35 minutes, that it's just a string of short form video content. Like oh, I don't know, because it. I love like, and it's not even about keeping attention. It's just, well, first of all, I don't edit specifically to keep attention. I just edit to how I think is necessary. I don't know, like how I would want to watch things because mm -hmm. I tend to kind of want to put things on two times speed. So like one time someone commented on one of my videos, I don't think I put it, I like responded to it, I cut it out for time, but like, yeah, someone was like, watching Garrett's videos on two times speed is impossible and insane, don't do it. <laughs> and I was like, yes, you don't have to do that because I already edit on I'm two, times, two speed. times speed. It's yeah. like, I understand that because I do that with almost every video. So it's like, do, I meet you halfway there. Like yeah. I edit for that mentality. So don't do it because you're just gonna hear like a hum and see a bunch of colors. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I don't know, but. Um, so what, are you, so what are you doing on TikTok now? Are you taking the same... TikTok was really you're cool. You're a TikToker, right? <laughs> I don't know about that. I mean, I don't upload there like that often. Sure, sure. But no, and I, but people, I was actually a little concerned that it, when I said that I was doing a TikTok brand deal, well, I kind of thought that maybe there'd be some like blowback and people would be like, oh, that's cringe. Or like, 
get off TikTok because you're a grown ass man or something like that. There was none of that. I didn't see mm-hmm. any of that. And I was really delighted. And I also was pretty straight up with TikTok through the management company or whoever I worked with over there. It was like, I was like, hey, I, I was kind of forward about being like, I'm not going to do this if you guys want me to, you know, be like a musically, like, I'm not like a cute boy. I'm like, you know what I mean? I'm not one of those. Like, I was like, my shirt's staying on. I'm just going to be doing whatever I want to do there. And they were like, no, yeah. that's great. Because yeah. I think TikTok's making a very concentrated effort to be like for everyone. Yeah. As opposed to being like, you know, it's very limited younger age demographic. Um, What's your demo? My demo. Your What's demo. Your demo? Um, Who's watching you? I would say, I mean, uh, well, the demo of YouTube in general is just very young, but I would mm-hmm. say like, I don't know, 16 to like 24. Okay. Um, and I take like great, great, great pride in that. Um, and I can't believe that, I can believe it, but I'm really honored that people trust me with watching me. Yeah. Because I, the, the people that gave me my foundation and core and like where I create from and where I joke from all the time, like comedians like Amy Sedaris and stuff like this, like the show called Strangers with Candy. And like, I just, love Strangers with Candy. It is my with favorite candy. show. I, I'm almost afraid that people will watch that and just Do be like. Do people know Strangers with Candy? I mean, it's, you know, it came out in what, 1997? Was, that, was, Stephen, was that Stephen Colbert? Stephen Colbert. And, and yeah, that's like. I love that. The principal. Yeah. The, <laughs> who was his name? Principal Blackman. Principal Blackman. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the humor in Strangers with the Candy is like so deadpan. I, I not I can't even repeat the things because people would take it out of context yeah. and cancel culture me. No, yes. I don't know, but like the things that they would say on there, the jokes <laughs> you could never ever ever get away with nowadays. No. I mean, I look back at them and I'm like, I cannot believe those are on. Where TV. can you Where can you watch those? Anymore? You can find Strangers with Candy. I think you can. Are they on YouTube? You can you can buy it. Like oh, I have like it DVDs. purchased on like Apple. Oh, I'm a I'm a big physical media fan. I've got like mad DVDs and books and like yeah. Yeah, so I have the DVDs, but oh, okay. um, I know I'm 3,000 years old with that stuff. But um, did, yeah, you, no. did you see yourself like growing up and watching things like that? Did you see yourself as a writer? Like I could write jokes like that. No, I, I wanted w- to be a director always. You was yeah. But when did you decide you wanted to be on in front of the camera? A lot of directors don't. Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, and I never got, like, my formal training as a director. I'm not, like, fooling you being like, well, listen, I went to NYU and, like, <laughs> decided it wasn't for me. I just, I don't know. Um, there's, uh, there's so many things that I want to do. I always say that I wish life was, like, 300 years long so I could do, like, one-tenth of the things that I want to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm really, it's really cool that I get to do this thing on YouTube where I can sort of, I mean, you have to kind of be careful about what you do because there are so many times when I first started my channel, like with, with Shane, because he like was such a healthy mentor for me and sort of helping me kind of like stay in the lane a little bit of like, hey, don't get too crazy. Because I wanted to make videos called like, um, like, you know, make a series about the most amazing people you don't know. And I wanted to do like a whole video about like a video essay about Bjork. And he's like... <laughs> <laughs> and you know, like stuff like that, you know. Yeah. But, but I've learned that okay. It, but why is that video not okay? I mean, you're is, cool. Your passion. It is okay. Is it because it won't reach a big audience? Well, there's some of that too. But like, it's also I found a way. I think it's really fun to seed those ideas more into videos in like more subtle ways. Okay. Like, it doesn't almost really matter what the video is called or like what the thumbnail is and stuff. It does in a way for like you know viewership because I'm not gonna fool myself and be like, oh that doesn't matter. Like yeah. it does matter. It's my job. It's the only job that I have. Yeah. And so it's like you know you got to do that well. But also yeah, it's really fun because I can put little tiny snippets of like a song or something or a sound effect or or be like, oh by the way, if you haven't seen Charlie's Angels Full Throttle, like just check this out. There's a scene where and then suddenly I'm talking about Charlie's Angels Full Throttle for two minutes. <laughs> so instead of doing a video called like, why you need to watch Charlie's Angels Full Throttle, which yep. people would be like, what? Yeah. I can make a video called My Insane Tiny House Tour and then fit 90 of those things into that. So it You're I just, working at double speed. Yeah, so my videos are just like vignettes of my mind. It's just these weird kind of like <clears throat> like shoot them all out and whatever and Hopefully people are into it, and so th- so far they seem to be, which is really cool. But I think it's an honor that I get to be part of people's like upbringing. Like the fact that my demographic is younger, I has it stayed or has it got older as you've been around longer? I don't know. Or does it stick around to that sixteen twenty four? You know, the thing is, is I just don't know, and I don't concern myself. We live in a city to where everybody is constantly concerning themselves with algorithms, demographics, oh, yeah. what it means. I mean, I cannot tell you how many meetings I took. What's your you know, engagement rate? What's your engagement rate? What are CPMs? What are this, what are that? Yes. I take such pride in not giving a shit about that stuff. Because it's just like, at the end of the day, all you can do is make cool stuff, create it from a place that you think is interesting, and put it out there. Like, it's the clowns who are talking about the, I'm really upset at the Instagram algorithm, and I feel like you guys aren't seeing my things. Did you guys see my stuff? Because I want to make sure, it's like, yeah. oh my god, I get it, you have pride in this, but who, who is this for? Yep. This weird, like, asking of your people if they watch, like, shut up. If they want to watch it, they'll watch it. I've never said in a video, uh, be sure to put me on notifications. People know. Ring you can, the bell. You can put me on notifications. 
these are people whose their life is YouTube. My, yeah. They know YouTube way better than I do. They know that they can go to their notifications and press that button. That's they a don't, good point. They don't need me to tell them. Uh, I do have a subscribe button at the end. I don't think I say so. I don't, certainly don't say it anymore. Like, be sure to subscribe. Mm -hmm. They know they can do that. You don't yeah. have to tell people how to turn a TV on if they want to watch TV. Sorry. Now yeah. I'm just getting a little bit like, No, yeah. that's a good, <laughs> that's an excellent point. But, it, you know, it is kind of fun because, because, we're in, because everyone else yeah. is doing it. You feel like you have to. And at the end, I say subscribe. Yeah. I say oh, turn on. Oh, do you? Okay. And that, but I, that's but, awesome. I have a subscribe button. I'm not like, you know. But you're right. Yeah. Well, you, I do it because everybody else does. So it's sure. a thing. But you're right. The person watching this right now knows how to subscribe to a channel, yeah. knows how to turn on notifications, doesn't need to be reminded. It's interesting. Doesn't need to be beaten over the head with it. You know what's one thing about myself, though, that it's a little, it's sometimes, maybe it's a good thing, maybe it's a bad thing, I don't know. I keep on touching my mic, I'm sorry. What is wrong with I you? Don't is know. this your first time on no, camera? No, it's not. Well, I do say no to most everything besides Tom. I want to I be really it. appreciate no, it, too. But I, 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 I don't uh, know why you're sitting down I'm with I'm an endlessly right fidgety person, sorry. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, what was I saying, though? Oh yeah, I didn't, so I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. Sometimes I think it's cool because it lets me kind of create in my own way without really comparing myself to other people. And sometimes it's bad because I'm not plugged into the zeitgeist of YouTube. And what I'm referring to is that I didn't grow up watching YouTubers at all. Mm -hmm. um, like when I matched with Shane on Tinder, I was loosely aware of who he was because of, of the fact that people had always said, you look like Shane Dawson, you look like Shane Dawson. I was like, oh yeah, people have said that I look like you before. It was like a minute into the conversation to where mm -hmm. I even realized that. Um, yeah, I didn't grow up watching any YouTubers at all. I watched like, you know, I was weird. When I was the age where a lot of kids were watching YouTube, I was watching like spaghetti westerns and weird Shambara films yes. from like Japan and anime and all this stuff. Yeah. And, you know, I just was How never- How good was like High Plains Shrifter and- Oh dude, anime is like my king. Yeah. I, I, I'm such a huge nerd. I have sometimes thought about like starting a completely separate channel where I just get to like <laughs> play video games and talk about anime and talk about movies and like Your just, fans would love it. I, and then I go- But you only post two videos a year. Well, but the thing is, is because yeah, but it'd be cool to have a channel where I like don't, I, need, I could just do whatever I want. And yeah, then yeah. I go, no, you just need to figure out how to do that on your own channel. Sure. Sorry, I'm a huge existential <laughs> YouTube crisis, basically. That's the summary <laughs> of this whole interview. Um, no, but, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's interesting because uh, there's a lot of people who have all these references to YouTubers they know, and do you know what this person's doing? And da 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 da, da. And I've, I've, I don't really feel plugged into that. I always say that the only YouTubers I know are the YouTubers that I know, like, yeah. that I've met. You know, You're not through. trying to collab. No, although... If For views. If it was natural, like, I reached yeah. out to Simply Nelogical Nello once, because... Mm -hmm. I was like, I love her. Her and her bo boyfriend, Ben. I think she's yeah, really yeah. cool and like, oh, I love their vibe so much. So I, there, I do watch some, by the way. Obviously, I watch like my friends, yeah. like the stuff that they make and that sort of thing. Um, but just didn't grow up doing it. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I don't know. I would with the right people for sure, like go and goof off and I don't know. Yeah. But you know, I think that's, again, what kind of makes you attractive is mm -hmm. how... I, the trend, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago was, or last month, I'll let the person in front of me make my Starbucks order or make my drive through order, and then everybody does the same fucking video. Oh, yeah. And then it's on to the next trend and next trend, and yeah. it's kind of cool you're not getting caught up in that. And the other problem with that is yeah. it's, it's not evergreen. That video, no one's going to watch that video a month from now. Yeah, but with I, the, your stuff, they can go back and watch that. That's really nice uh, from six to, years ago to hear, actually, because I always get a little. It, it always strikes a nerve with something in my head. It kind of is like a little bit of a pet peeve when something is not evergreen. Like one of my favorite Beyonce songs references Instagram, and I, I think it's Rocket. The song called Rocket. Yeah, and I love that song so much. I could be wrong. Angel, no angel, Rocket. Sorry, I mean, a Beyonce well, song lyrics like, for the right song here. Yeah, but she, she, right? She, <laughs> I think it's Rocket. She says Instagram in it, and I'm like, ah. <laughs> Dang yeah. it, like if D'Angelo would have said the word Instagram in his song Untitled, which is, I think, the best song. D'Angelo? is Untitled is, I've always said, the best song. What album song, is that on? Is that uh, on Brown? Voodoo. I, oh, Voodoo, I love, and Brown Sugar, they're classics. Brown Sugar. For you younger 16-year-old fans out there, go get D'Angelo's first two albums. Dude, if you do one thing, put it in... He releases video oh. albums... Oh, I hate this. I know where you're going Longer with this. than you make videos, right? He goes no. like 10 years between albums. It's a, my favorite artist, like Fiona Apple, releases an album oh. every seven years. Like D'Angelo every 10 years. <laughs> like, I'm, I don't know what it is about people that I love creatively, like, that just take their time between stuff. Shadow Boxer's my jam. Oh, Shadow Boxer is my fucking jam. Dude, Waltz by Fiona Apple. And it's uh, Billie, Billie Eilish is like definitely kind of. She's I, in that I was, vein, kind yeah, of. Yeah, she's. I, I see what she she is for younger people today. What Fiona Apple is was for. hundred percent. It, it's really interesting. Um, and so I'm not like, yeah, I, I I'm not a hater on many things. Like yeah, she's she's cool. Um, but evergreen is evergreen cool. is the way to go. Yeah, it's really cool. I love I love stuff that you that kind of holds up. Not that I think like, oh, my YouTube videos are so noble that people are going to be watching years them. From now, years. they're going to be watching them. But it is kind of fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like the idea of things being evergreen in art, it's like kind of cool. But I also understand, here's the other thing, mm -hmm. writing trends and doing that sort of thing yeah. and challenges, 
I don't know. I'm not a very like shady person. It's like rock on. If that's what you like to do. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like it, it's you know, I, it's not for me, but like, but it's also. I mean, I've done things that. I mean, there's probably a hundred videos on YouTube called "Staying in a Japanese Capsule Hotel," and I even did like a trying a Jeffrey Star makeup tutorial. But because yeah. my whole ideology on that is, sure, everyone's seen that, but no one's seen me do it. That's true. Everybody so, has their own take on it. Yeah, and a lot of people let fear shut them because I can't tell you how many times when I, when people find out what you do. Everyone wants to start a YouTube channel. Everybody. That's kids' number one career yeah. aspiration not, right now. Not even become a YouTuber. Not even kids. I spoke to someone last night for like two hours. She was like, I don't know, 38 or something. Yeah. Who was like, oh, I'm gonna start a YouTube channel and she's so funny and great and all this stuff. So I was like <laughs> feeding that fire. Yeah. But uh, my point Go is, for is it. yeah, but everyone wants to do that. So it's really interesting. And um, yeah, and uh, they always let fear shut them down and being like, oh, well, I don't want to review music. Because there's already, uh, you know, 10 it's people true. that do that so much better than I could ever dream of. And I go, and that's right there why you're never, ever going to start a YouTube channel. Because you believe that because it's already done, that you can't do a version of it that's equally as great or p perhaps even better. Well, you, I get where they're coming from, though. I interviewed yeah. this girl, McKenna Kelly. Okay. She's an ASMR girl. She's like 13 years old, red hair. She's so cute. Yeah. And that's what she does. <laughs> but she started yeah. before ASMR was a thing. Oh, and I yeah. asked her, I go, if you started now, mm -hmm. would you still be successful? She said, yeah, but it would take me a lot longer. And I do understand that. So like that. now, no matter what you're trying to do, there's mm -hmm. a thousand channels that are doing the same thing. Oh my gosh, well, yeah. Where in 2012, you could have been the first at something. That's true. Yeah, that's definitely true. But yeah, I never, if someone, I never, I always encourage people to just do it their own way. Because yeah. there's so many people like, oh my gosh, sitting down and watching, I love, I have like favorite YouTubers for sure. Who's your of, favorite YouTubers? Uh, Give a shout out. Seth Everman is someone that I, I really know. love. He just sits at his keyboard. He had a really popular like Billie Eilish video where he was like wearing a wig. Okay. Um, that I feel like I've seen a million times. He's like so wonderful. Um, there are people I love. I like, you know what side of YouTube I like is the mm. more like video essay side of YouTube. Like Defunct Land, they talk about, um, oh, it's such a cool channel. I'm so do you ever just get so grateful that things exist that you're like, how is this real? I feel that way about like Kill Bill, Moulin Rouge, and oh, yeah. some things that I love that I'm just like, what are the Did odds? Did you see the new Tarantino one? Oh, yes. How good is it? It's, I love it. I'm obsessed. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm a huge Tarantino fan. But yeah, like, me too. There are just some things in this world that I go, how does this exist? This is so cool. And that's what's so great about the internet. So many things can exist simultaneously. Like, it's becoming so normal for you to talk about someone nowadays who has, like, someone of my, you know, subscriber count or whatever. Yeah. And for someone to be like, I have no idea who that is. That reaction is fine. I even encourage it. There is so much room at the table. It's so cool. I mean, how many yeah. YouTube channels have three million subscribers? Probably, uh, probably endless a, number and yeah. people you've never heard of. And that is oh, that is what is so sick about it's the internet. It's pretty cool. It is so cool because because everyone's interests are becoming so um, you know. I'm so niche. I always, re it's interesting. Like our parents and stuff, they always talk about these musicians, like, oh, uh, Michael Jackson, uh, Bob Dylan, Lee, you know, these, and they're great legendary musicians and all these things, but they only had a radio station playing 25 artists. Yep. And so, of course, they were the only people because they, they had this one thing that was feeding them everything. The competition pool was and small. Of, and of course, there's something beautiful to be said for that, which meant that the cream really had to rise to the top. You had to be bringing it you to get on the radio. You had to be bringing it. You had to be a Michael Jackson. But you still only had like 25 artists to choose from. So, there's one of those things where nowadays, everyone, I cannot stand people like a lot of like boomer age sort of people who say like, who want to shade millennials or Generation Z or whatever it's called and just be like, oh, you know, they're so whatever this or that. It's so annoying. It's like, it is so awesome that people's interests are becoming so dead specific with the internet yep. that they can be into this. You know. And there's an audience for that. Whatever yeah. your niche is, there's people out there who are like all about it. Yeah, like right now, there's probably like a couple artists doing like graveyard, witch house style <laughs> hip hop on SoundCloud. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, they it's, have a huge following. They have a huge following, and that's, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I'm just, I love what people are into, and I love how that is growing more and more every day with the internet. Like, you know, I don't know. I, yeah. Well, people do say that about millennials, right? But yeah. I, yeah, I come from a different generation, but I look at them, the reason I do this, and I love it so much, I don't watch YouTube, really. I watch, yeah. like, certain channels, <laughs> but I don't watch the YouTubers, Yeah. right? But the thing I love about them is they're all business people, mm -hmm. right? They're, they own, most of the big ones have an LLC. Mm -hmm. They're their own boss. Yeah, definitely. They have to do everything. They're, they're lighting experts, they're videographers, they're editors, I can they're relate content to that. creators. Yeah. You know, I just love the hustle yeah. and drive of successful YouTubers. Yeah, there's, I, and I could take a page from- They're not lazy. From, I could take a page from their book for sure. <laughs> like, I really could. Like, <laughs> you know, like even like Shane and stuff inspires yeah. me all the time. Sure. And, just with his work ethic. And I definitely, like I said, could take a page from some of that mentality because I tend to just like, I could be sitting in front of a plant all day mm -hmm. or I could be like 
doing something extraordinary in Japan and be like equally satisfied. What do you do? Oh, I heard this quote yesterday. Can I tell you about of it? Of course. It said, oh, it's a, from Mary Poppins, and I, I wanted to get it like tattooed on my arm when I heard it because it was like. Do you have so, tattoos? No, none. <laughs> I think but it I be your wanted first one. it. It says, um, I think the phrase was, enough is as good as a feast. I think that's what it was. Enough is as good as a feast, which is like something that I agree with so much. It's like the mentality I was sure. talking about. How like a couch is a couch if it fills the function the of a couch. The Prius with no AC is a feast. Yes. Yeah. Enough is as good as a feast. I was like, I wish people would understand that. Wow. Because, you know, there's all these quotes that you get from people like Jim Carrey being like, you know, it takes famous, it takes becoming famous to learn that becoming famous isn't the answer or like that or becoming yeah, rich. Yeah, yeah, isn't yeah. The, it's like those things to where, because people use that whole fame or money as like a grass is greener on the other side sort of thing. And you never... No. There's always more to, that you need yeah, to feed the beast. It's really interesting. So it's like, I just, I, if any, I love what I, like, I don't know. Because sometimes if I, like, pull up to Starbucks at, you know, the right or wrong time, depending on how you look at it, and it's like all the kids are out of school and stuff like that, and it turns into, like, this weird little meetup moment or something, <laughs> I, I take, like, pride in, like, rolling up in a Prius. Yeah. It's weird. Like, this ratty Prius with, like, dents. It's, it's a weird like, flex. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like, I'm just, I'm, I do not romanticize me. Like, when girls or whatever start, like, freaking out in front of me, I'm like, stop. Save this for someone like cuter than me or like yeah. cooler than me. <laughs> I'm just like I am just like a normal dude. Like you, came you know, what here, I mean? yeah. guys. He came here by himself. He texted me yeah. before. I can't tell you how rare that is. Oh. I don't. I don't have contact with a YouTuber. It's all through the PR person. Oh. They come with a team. The managers oh, there. People love their decorations. Yeah, but. Shane, I met him at a coffee shop. Oh, yeah. Just Shane's, by himself and, and no one. And but, by the way, Shane is great at this. But there's a there's people, but there's a lot of smaller YouTubers oh, who've got this whole oh, thing I know. about I know. them. There are Instagrams with their photo shoots every day, and yeah. it's this hyper-polished thing. Because they and I I I sounds like I'm hating on it the way I'm talking about no, it. No, you're not. It's so not my thing that maybe I am. I don't know. But like, yeah, that whole like plugging into this thing that's pre-established that works so well and they want to put on that costume like zip like zip it up and just be that and fulfill that and answer all those questions and hit the red carpet and take a picture in front of the step and repeats <laughs> yeah. I can't with that it's, it's too much it's too much well, so I I'm follow just, I'm a guy I yeah. follow Revolve on Instagram I don't even know what they are I think they make clothes or something yeah. but they have the hottest Instagram girls on uh, the planet like repping them interesting but they're all the same they're interchangeable you it know, is, okay, yeah. this one's got a brunette and this one's blonde, but I don't know yeah. what language the blonde girl speaks. It is really, I don't know anything about them. Yeah. I just know they're hot. That is the cost of, of um, plugging yourself into a pretty established thing because it's so easy to wear the right thing. So it's so easy, like when you're going to high school or something, yeah. to like wear the right thing and to kind of like fit in because people don't question it. They just accept you and whatever is so easy to you do. You go whatever. unnoticed. Yeah, 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 but it's like, well, no, not really. You kind of go notice. I'm just saying it's so easy oh, to, in, to insert yourself into something that's just like jumping into the wave. But it's a lot more fun, in my opinion. And maybe it just comes naturally to some people or whatever. But To just be to sort weird of, and different. Just to do your own thing. And then people look at that. Like, this is what I'm talking about when I say I'm confused why people watch me. Because it's like, I can't believe that you guys want to watch this like grown guy set up like a miniature dollhouse and call it Bug Manor. Yeah. And, and like, you know, and play like weird hip hop music. It's just like this... I don't know. I don't get it sometimes, but I'm really glad that people take to it for whatever reason that they do. And um, hopefully I can, I don't know, show some people that it's cool just to, that there's no status quo. There's no rule book. You can do what you want. I always say life is just like an open world sandbox video game. Yeah. Like, I could, you You've know. got a really good attitude just thanks. about life and fame. And oh, well, thanks. I mean, I would never let it, like, I still do this thing to where anytime someone approaches me, because it's gotten pretty intense. I mean, you know, just sure. like whatever, what I do, and the fact that I'm in some of Shane's videos that have like 30 million views and that sort of thing. Yeah. Like sometimes I don't even know I have a channel. Sometimes it'll just be like, <laughs> hey, tell Shane I love him, you're Shane's friend, right? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm an really extra sorry. on Shane's show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I'm like, well, just say no, I also have my own channel, but never mind, it's fine. You don't have to. No, but it's really funny. But yeah, I, I still do this thing to where people come up to me. Uh, I just treat them, I, even though I know exactly what it is. Like they're holding their phone yeah. and they're excited and they have that look on their face and I'm still just like, they don't, they don't, I, I never in my head go, they're approaching me because they're, because they're a fan. I'm just like, maybe they just need help with something on their phone or maybe they're <laughs> just, um, cause I don't want to start you doing that. You expect it. In my head. So I always have this kind of surprise reaction when people do it. Maybe it's like I'm fooling myself or something, but I don't know. It's a, it's important for me to never assume that that's why people are going to walk up to me. Yeah. Cause what if someone walked up to me to like, Ask me for the time, and I'm like, "Hey, can I get a picture with you?" Yeah. They'd be like, "You're a dick. <laughs> you who, who are, are you? you?" I don't. <laughs> it's so funny. There's this really. This is just like a funny thing, but moms mm -hmm. of fans do this really interesting thing. <laughs> Every time their daughter wants a photo, yeah. they get aggressive. It's so weird. They're like, "Just so you know, I have no idea who you are." Damn. I know it's like this weird thing to where you want to be like, 
okay, well, I'm just going to go ahead and take a picture with your daughter and please don't be mad at me. They're just like, well, I just want you to know I have no idea who you are. Why the fuck would they say that? I don't know. It's like a weird, maybe it's like a... Maybe they do watch your videos and they don't want people to know. You know what's funny is when people come up to you that you're just like... Like one time this guy approached me like a couple weeks ago in the airport who was so hot. He's <laughs> like, maybe like, you know, like 45, like salt and pepper hair, just like gorgeous. I, I, he like walked up to me and like froze. I was like, uh, hey, uh, hey. <laughs> and he was like, I just want to let you know that I love your videos so much. And I was just like, <laughs> I didn't even know what to do. I was just like, oh, thanks. <laughs> Can I get a picture with you? <laughs> no, but I just, because when people walk up to you and, you know, they don't look like a normal you know, yeah. someone you'd assume would watch you. Sure. It always it's not a 16-year-old girl at Starbucks. Yeah, it's really funny. Yeah. But I, I loved it that time because he was gorgeous. You should. I wanted to like put handcuffs on him just be like, you're mine now. <laughs> We're are, getting- you, are you good at, I, when I was dating, I was terrible with that. Actually like picking up someone or like getting somebody's oh. number that you meet at an airport. Oh, I'm pretty bold. Are you good at that? Oh yeah, I'm pretty like forward with that kind of thing. Oh, no shit. Because it like fits into that mentality of me saying like life is like a video game. Like, People are so afraid of rejection. So there's times with like, so a guy. So why didn't you ask the hot salt oh, pepper guy no, for his, his number? Because his family was standing <laughs> about 20 feet behind him. He, he, his, Fair enough. Yeah, exactly. Fair enough. But no, it was one of those things to where, uh, no, I feel like I've got a pretty good gauge on that. But no, I'm pretty bold in general because I'm not afraid of rejection. I think it's really cool to, like, if anyone's watching this, like, please of just. Of course people are watching. My friend Tanner gave, no, I, no, I don't mean like that. I hope people, if anyone's I hope people watching, watching, no. But I'm saying, like, I, I, it's, it's really good. My friend Tanner taught me this really great piece of knowledge that mm-hmm. I like, wish I could just get on a loudspeaker and say to the whole world um, because one time I said something nice to a woman in uh, in a line in like a grocery store mm-hmm. and uh, I said your hair is really like beautiful and cool and she was like a black woman and she gave me this look that was very um, like who do you think you are kind of thing Yeah. and in my head in my heart I was just like oh my god because it was so intricate and beautiful and cool and like cared for I mean it looked like it took her you know, five hours to create this masterpiece of, of this look that she had going on. She was so cool looking. And, but she gave me this look that was like offended. And I was telling my friend Tanner about that because he yeah. was staying at my place. And I just got back. I was like, I feel so conflicted because I think that she thought that I was being somehow you racist, know, racist or, yeah. or saying your hair is cool because it's different. But it, could, it wasn't that at all. It was just, I was like, your hair is so beautiful. And, he sa- and I was like, should I not have said that? And he was like, and he said, if you ever have something nice to say about someone and it comes from a genuine place, don't ever keep it inside. Don't ever keep it inside. He's like, let them make of it what they want to make of it. Sure. But it is your like responsibility on this planet to say that thing. So obviously there's like a creepy thing. You can't yeah, be like you've got a, a guy. Great ass. You, yeah, you can't walk up and be like, hey girl, what's up? Like, <laughs> I like those spandex on you. Like, no. But yeah. if you, especially for young people in school, I would say, like in junior high, high school, all that okay. stuff, please, if you appreciate someone's dinosaur backpack if you appreciate someone's hair if you appreciate any quality about them go up to them and express that because what do you have to lose okay worst case scenario they're gonna go okay thanks dude and yeah. walk away what a weirdo but probably in in a week two weeks time they're gonna come up to you and be like hey you came up to me and said something and it was actually really cool and it like made my day i'm sorry i reacted like that people just need to be shown that it's okay to do that yeah so when it comes to asking people out in public and stuff no that's okay i'm pretty bold and it has 90 percent of the time backfired on me. <laughs> like, I'll be talking to some cute guy at a party and think that I'm in love and I'll be like, hey, like, this could be totally out of line, but do you want to grab a drink sometime? Like, I don't know if anybody's like, oh, no, my girlfriend's over there. I'm like, ah, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> no, but I don't know. But yeah, be bold. I, I be say, bold. I don't know. There you go. But yeah, I also, you know, am a coward sometimes and get scared too. So sure, everybody that, does. But yeah, but that's my one thing is if you ever have something nice to say, Say it. <laughs> nice. Please. Yeah. What else? I mean, we've talked for a long time. We have, yeah. I don't know. Have I gone over? Have I ranted? What's happening? There like, is no time limit. That's great. What? I wanted to play a game, but we had such a good conversation. What, what game would you play if Two we did? Two truths, then one lie. Two truths, then one lie. Am I good at that? I don't know. It's, I'm kind of putting you on the spot. We don't have to so play. I would have to say... T- you would say three things, right? You would say, I climbed Mount Everest, I ate a burrito for lunch today, we and do, I'm we, wearing a hat. Do you play it too? Do you do it? No, just you. And I got to guess... <gasps> Wait, okay. No one cares about my truth. And And you have to detect the lie. I got to pick the lie. Okay, I got you. Oh, damn. Can I do it? Of course. Because I thought of something. What do you got? And I'm proud of myself. Okay. (laughs) I uh, once had a... Was Julie Andrews' escort for a night. Not that kind of escort. Okay. Uh, uh, No happy ending. No, I just had to take care of Julie Andrews. Okay. Sorry, this sounds weird. (laughs) At uh, one of her uh, concerts. And I had to take her around and hang out with her. Okay. Uh, the other one is that, uh, oh, I had a knife to my throat. Uh, I had a knife to my throat, and I got everything taken from me. 
And then another one is, is that I went to uh, NYU briefly, even though it was really, really expensive. Um, yeah, for a couple months. NYU is the lie. You're right. <laughs> yeah, how'd you know? You're not good at this game because I you're so know. intricate Here's with the, the other two. <laughs> so, and then you just like, ah, I went to NYU and I did my homework. I know you did good at NYU. I hate this. I did so bad. You know why? Because when I got to the lie, I had nothing. <laughs> I had nothing. And I was ah. like, what's the most unrealistic thing? You should thing open with the lie. <laughs> right? Oh, I should have. Yeah. Well, you want to play again? No. Well, tell me the story about getting held at knife point. Oh, that was crazy. I actually am really grateful for that. So that's one, one thing that's a little bit odd about me is I'm really, really grateful for bad experiences. Like, I've been in, like, pretty bad car crashes to where, like, as I was being, like, whiplashed, I've been, like, happy it happened. Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds crazy, but <laughs> not really as I was being whiplashed because obviously I'm human. But, like, when it comes to bad experiences like that, having a knife to my throat in Paris, I was on a night bus and there was this guy came up to me, he offered me drugs. I was like, no, I'm good. I just got back from Amsterdam. I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, he was like, okay, well, you know, what do you want? What do you want? Do you want like girls or something? And I was like, dude, I'm, I'm good. Like, I'm just chilling, you know? Yeah. And then he like pulled out a knife and then these five, nah, there were yeah, about five guys that came up with knives as well. But the one knife was to my throat and then the other guys were just like kind of brandishing knives. And uh, he was like, give me all your stuff. And I was just like, Okay, cool. Like, there's no problem here. Like, I'm good. If you want my Superman backpack that I'm traveling with, and like, my, you're gonna be very disappointed when you open it up and find like an Iron Giant action figure and like some old food. I don't know. So I was like, yeah, dude, take it, whatever. Um, and then they ran. Well, karma hit him instantly because he was like, they all freaked out and they ran off the night bus. Like, they pulled the. It was in Paris. They pulled the the cord, so like the bus stops and they all like ran off. But as the guy who had the knife to my throat, as he was running backwards, he tripped on one of the chairs and he hit his head so hard that he got instantly knocked out and his friends had to carry him off. That's awesome. It was crazy, but I was concerned. I was like upset for him. I was like, oh. You should have been like, good, fuck you. No, I was like, because I understand what could bring someone to that point of like needing stuff. And I was just like, when he hit his head, I was like, I was like that later. <laughs> but right after it happened, I was like, oh God, are you okay? Can I help? Like what? I didn't, you know, I was just like, oh. Anyways, but then now I'm like, yeah, good written. Good. I hope you knocked your head good, you <laughs> numb skull. I don't know. Well, you've said it all. I've said it all. You've said it all. I think we may be getting kicked out now. I don't know. That's great. I got the wrap-up sign from I'm, Daniel. Are we getting kicked out? Possibly. Uh, who knows? I need to be cut off. But who cares? I just go and go. That was great. Was it? Yeah. I don't know what great means. It was a good conversation. I've never seen an interview with you, a long-form interview. Me neither. So They don't exist. That's why. So now they ha you, there's one. Yes. Hopefully it's evergreen. Hopefully your fans will always watch this. I hope so. I mean, yeah, this was really nice. I, this was fun. It is it is cool to <laughs> throw up my burrito that I just <laughs> yeah. ate. Sorry. It is really cool to like just sit and kind of talk about everything else, you know, because when yeah. you're making a video, it's a very like... Super quick. Yeah, it's super quick and you have to kind of, you know, I don't know. Yeah, we is, got time. This is fun. This is fun. A sit in a chat. It's low it's, key. It's low key. It's yeah. a subscribe. No, I can't even say that. After the whole rant, turn on notifications. <laughs> just kidding. Accept me. Hopefully you like it. Love me. Please subscribe. <laughs> I Love need my this. channel. I need this so bad. He needs this, guys. Come on. Put your notifications on. <laughs> subscribe, follow on Instagram. All the things. All the things. Thank you so much for sitting down, man. It was a real pleasure. This has been fun. Cool. I'm going to go drink so much of your cold soda water over there. <laughs> <laughs> I am. All right. Thank you. Wow. Do bye. we both say bye? That's bye. it. Bye. Bye. <laughs>